Hello and welcome to your video. Today we're gonna to take a look here at the Shadow Claw version of Galissa Pot in the open Great League here. As this is also a new addition for the new season. And we kind of want to take a look at this Pokemon real quick as we face a very spicy Pokemon here with the Rosa Raid. We can go for one Aerial Ace, get the shield there. As we can now shield up the potential Weather Ball here as we go ahead, can go for another Aerial Ace. But we see Peter here, which wasn't the smartest idea. But at least I know that I can realign now against the Medicham and I don't really have to face it with my lead. This is a sp pretty standard team here actually with our Gfisk in the lead and then the core together with the Arachnid in the back. Of course Arachnid and Golisupport have basically the same typing which is pretty decent. So this is a very nice ABB line where you can just try to get out the answer for Arachnid with the Golisupport. But yeah, in general I feel like Arachnid kind of lost some potential recently like you don't really see those things that you answer with this Pokemon anymore. Warren is completely gone. So yeah, like this Pokemon kind of was not as good as I had it in like memories or whatever. So I'm not really that happy with erecting it. And also the Galissapod, it still needs a good charge move. Like it still only has Aerial Ace, Aqua Jet and also the Excisor. So it's sometimes a little bit of a problem to yeah, deal with stuff. I had a lot of good wins with this. Of course, we're still in like earlier ranges of the season. It's not like legend range or anything like this. I think still my opponents know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing because I should have went into my Galissapod because Galissapod has a better matchup against the Medicham thanks to now the addition of Shadow Claw, but also having access to Aerial Ace, which is super effective, but we're still going to be able to realign here, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, in general, team worked out pretty well. I just wish that A, the meta would be better for Arachnid right now, which it definitely isn't. It's definitely way worse now because all those Pokemon, also I don't really see as many Swampert anymore all of a sudden. Why does my opponent shield here? I am not going to question that. But yeah, we see a Lantern coming in. We can go for an Earthquake. Let's see what they're going to do here. They're going to let this move go through. Fine for me, it's going to be a water gun version and we can just go ahead and go for one exit here. Going to get the final shield actually, which is very interesting. And we're gonna let this a Thunderbolt, I think. Yeah, Thunderbolt going to let this go through here. We're going to go down here, which is fine because we can farm this thing down. We have a shield advantage and we can just go ahead, go for three rock sites against this Altaria. We shield up the Moonblast, which was very good that we shield up the first one then. And... I don't think two rock slides are enough, but three rock slides definitely should be enough. So there should be a pretty decent win here. As we see that, yeah, exactly. We actually maybe can farm down though. Even that would be funny. Can we farm down? Much or down a flying type? That would be hilarious. And we can. Good to get that to my opponent. But yeah. Gully support, say so. It's definitely better to have Shadow Claw on this Pokemon. It's definitely a good adjustment. But just needs one more good charge move. Like, just needs like this one hard hitting water type move that it can learn. I don't know. I don't know if it can learn Surf or anything like this. And if it just learns this one hard hitting water type move, it would have been very, very good. But right now, it just misses this extra move to be very decent or like in general playable because aerial ace is horrible and exit is also horrible so you have like two moves that are pretty damn bad exit is at least still usable because you have step on it but um yeah bug typing in general as an offensive move is usually not very really good and if you just had a good water type move you would have been so much better off but like this it's a little bit tricky at least as we see here we can shield up this potential foul play it is a foul foul play here as so we can go for one aerial ace but they go back into their needle queen again if we had a water type move imagine this i think actually like if we would have got an, or a water type move on this pokemon this thing would be instant meta but like right now just shadow claw plus um the exeter is just just not doing it to be honest as we see here next opponent going to have victini victini now has access to quick attack kind of want to make a video about this pokemon as well might already do it someday soon um we have to see but yeah quick attack victini is now kind of interesting because now you're gonna going to get to the v creates after five fast moves which is kind of insane uh, it's still not crazy good though, like people overhype it a little bit in my opinion right now. It's definitely a cool Pokemon to use, but I don't think it's as crazy as people say it is. Um, it just lacks like the bulk, it lacks the coverage as well. So it just basically, it has like Psychic, I mean it has also, also still Psychic as a charge move, but it's like not as good as 
just spamming the recreate. So I'm not sure how good it really is. I have to try it out myself, but I feel like it just misses something. So yeah, over here I actually didn't throw my fast move on purpose, so I get more farm here. So I would be able to get to move against the Victini, but they go into their Swilers. We can go ahead, go for one Earthquake here, and you know what we have in the back. We have a Pokemon in the back that can beat actually both of the Pokemon that are still left, so... Not really too scared. We can go for one rock slide and now we swap out and just bug bite the Swilers down. They actually go for one charge move to waste my time, which is not really the best thing, especially as they are just under charge it to like zero bubble. Very good there. So unnecessary. <laughs> but we see an Azumarill against us. Let's see what we can do here. We can go for one Earthquake because we can go for the Earthquake before they can get to one. Hydro Pump, but I'm just gonna swap out onto the Hydro Pump into our Galissapod, catching the move, getting the Altaria out of the way, which is very good for me as well. Not sure right now why I went for the Excessor here. I think the difference between Excessor and the Aerial Ace isn't big anyway, but at least we can go for another Aerial Ace. And now we put him into range for one Rock Slide. We actually lose CMP here, which I didn't know that this would be the case. So, um, yeah, I didn't know that the Altaria has less bulk than the g -Fisk, but I can, I guess we can farm him down now. And we see a Swampert coming in. We're going to try to catch the move on our Raccoon, and we're going to be able to do this, which allows us now to align this thing against also the Azumarill, which should be still okay. I'm going to go ahead and bait the potential bug boss. Of course, all our moves are resisted, but usually you're going to be able to win this matchup as an Arachnid just because of your bulk and your fast move damage from the bug bite. You see it goes down like the, the health of the Azumarill. It's just because it always does like this set damage every half a second, which is kind of amazing about one turn moves, especially in the um, Great League one turn moves are one of my favorite type of moves, as we see here, that we already do a lot of damage against this Azumarill. We're going to let this move go through. Still going to be close though, as this player of doesn't KO me, I can try to farm them down. They swap out into their Swampert, I can debuff them. It's going to still be a little bit close. We don't get the shield here, we can go for one Bugbus, do we get the shield now? We have to see here, we're going to get no shield here, we can go for one Rock Slide. Let's see, we can still win this, one Rock Slide coming in. Gonna get the shield, another Rock Slide coming in. As of course, my opponent gets always the fast moves through, which is kind of an issue. As I hope that I can still get to one rock slide. They go for one charge move here with the hydro cannon. We can go for the rock slide, but they're sadly going to be able to knock us out here, and this is going to be a good game. But wait, we still have our Reckonet, and we have one HP on this, and this is enough to KO also the Azumarill, and we're still going to be able to win this game. Good game to my opponent. Next up, we're going to have a Nido Queen against us in the lead here. This is actually something that I hate. I just don't like this matchup. I always shield the Poison Fang. I always no shield the Earth Power. It's just always the same thing. It always annoys me. As we at least get our shield back here, we do more damage with our fast moves and we can catch the potential Earth Power on our Galissapod. As we are Bug type, we're going to be able to resist the Ground type moves. And we can go for one extra before they can go for one Poison Fang here. Of course, it would be resisted, they shield anyway, but I didn't really want to get too much damage from the Poison Fang, or like in general, don't get any damage on this Nido Queen here. As we can go into our G-Fisk now, they swap into their Sableye, which is fine for me, as we can go for one Earthquake here, and now we can go also for one Rock Slide, and we should be able to put him into range where we can farm it down with a one more Mud Shot, as this is exactly what's going to happen now, and we can just hopefully go for a charge move against the Nido Queen as they throw already. I think this was too early and it was too early. This was just a poison fang and they decide to surrender here. As we see the next opponent having Altaria in the lead. A very good lead for us. They have to swap out into the Lantern which is a spark version which is not good for my backline. Very interesting here in general. Um, again, it might be the team that I also showcased before. Run Water Gun on this. Like if you want to run the Lantern as a safe swap, especially with Altaria in the lead. You should definitely try to go for Water Gun instead of the Spark. I know you generate ARG faster, but you also just don't have the pressure against stuff like GFS with it. So here we just destroy this thing and now they're going to surrender again because I think they had a right GC on the back and they didn't know how to play this team that I wanted to showcase. So uh, we see the next opponent having a Stunfisk against us as well. We go for the Rock Slide, but of course the game just decides to lag completely. I'm not sure how much energy my opponent has now. I'm not sure how much energy I have now. I go for a rock slide. They shield up as well. I can go for another rock slide here. And I'm pretty sure that my opponent had less energy from the leg. So they thought, oh, this is only a rock slide. Well, I got more and they just didn't see it. Because now they go for one move, which is also a rock slide. And it's all kind of awkward because 
we're all just throwing rocks at each other, even though it's all double resisted, which is hilarious. We get the final shield as well, and we're also going to be able to catch the move here on our Galissaport, which is going to be the Earthquake now resisted again, as we can now get basically KO'd usually from this Pokemon, but they catch the move on the Ninetales, which is kind of annoying for us, as we have to go for an Aerial Ace here. This doesn't look too good in general as a matchup now, as we have only one game plan and this is to go into the Arachnid now and I'm going to try to put this thing so low that I get I'm basically into range where I can farm him down with my stun fist because I kind of need a lot of energy on my stun fist gear to get to an earthquake and I'm going to be able to get there but my opponent also has an Arachnid in the back my opponent stored enough energy on their stun fist that they can now go ahead swap out and go for an earthquake here there's nothing I can do here anymore this is a good game I try to see how much damage I can still do with one bubble beam here but before they can go for an rock slide it is still not enough and we just decide to surrender here as we cannot KO this Pokemon good game there we see the next one here with a Nido Queen. Nido Queen is definitely a matchup that I just still don't like. We have some lag there as well. I definitely wanted to go for move. Of course, <laughs> this time when we know Shield is going to be an Earth Power. And they're going to swap out as well into their Scrafty. Ah, oh, man, I hate it. I just hate it. I hate this deep matchup. I'm just not built for this. We see the foul play coming through against us. We can just farm down. We actually go for one more. Um, what's called bubble beam to try to put him into a range where they cannot go for another charge move and we actually got him there which is really nice if they want to go back into their needle queen they still have to take some super effective bubble beams even though they will not do as much damage it's still going to do some damage at least and it's going to put them into a range where i can maybe farm down later with other stuff like the support with the shadow claw as i swap exactly into this pokemon we can go for one exit here let's see what they're going to do as we see that they're going to let this move go through, I'm going to no shield this. I expect them to have a Sableye in the back, and it is not a Sableye, it is an Umbreon. And we can go ahead, go for an Exeter here real quick. This Exeter will do no damage because they shielded. It wouldn't do that much damage anyway because it's an Exeter. They go for Dark Pulse and KO us, but I just put everything onto my Arachnid now because my Arachnid should be able to hopefully get to a bug, like bug boss in general, maybe to two even would be very ideal but we only just re reached this one here and they're going to shoot this up we see the defense drop and this tells me now they're in range one earthquake so i'm going to let this move actually go decide to go everything onto the stun first gear and go for one earthquake let's see if this already chaos they cleared the debuff here and this is enough to win the game they're a good game to my opponent as we see another Umbreon against us. Of course, we would like to see this in the back against our Arachnid, but we're going to stay in here. We're going to go for an Earthquake as well, but they go again for one Dark Pulse. I don't know why everybody runs Dark Pulse. It's not the wrong decision, by the way. Um, it really is preferences about like foul play or dark pulls. I like the foul play a little bit more because you get to the moves faster and you can like have scenarios where you basically um, just barely get to it while you wouldn't be able to get to the other move. But I think maybe nowadays where sneaks are guaranteed, the dark pulls might be a little bit better because you allow basically your opponent not to sneak as often because you don't throw as many far charge moves. So maybe dark pulls is nowadays better. We can realign here, they go back into the Umbreon and we can go ahead, go for one more XSR, trying to get another shield here maybe, as we can get some nice damage on this Pokemon. We can go for another one, but they go into the Galarian Weezing, which we can counter back with our G-Fisk. We have a lot of energy stored here, we can go for an Earthquake. Do they want to shield this move up? Do they not want to shield this move up? They want to shield, which is fine for me, it really looks hilarious how this... Uh, wheezing us basically doing and smooth by the way we see an overheat coming through as we can go for one earthquake here this earthquake will be able to ko this wheezing and there's not a lot that the opponent can do here anymore as we still have our record in the back they can go for dark pulse if they want to i don't really mind it too much we can just go into our record later on and we should be able to do some um yeah just some nice damage with our fast moves my opponent just decides to surrender and that's going to be it for this game as we go into the final one there's going to be a tricky one as we see a, a, low, a normal nine tails here in the lead normal nine tails is a little bit tricky to deal with because we have basically nothing to for this pokemon so yeah we can take one weather ball here at least on our galiss support as we can now see a sableye coming in we can go for one exeter we can go for another exeter hopefully Yep, and we're gonna put them into a range now after this hits where we can actually farm down at the same time as they farm me down. They don't want to throw a charge move here, fine for me. 
I have to go into my GFISC and I have to try to go for rock sides against this nine tails here. Let's see what they have in the back afterwards. Going to be very interesting if we can still win this game. Um, we have to shield this move up here. They go for the weather ball. We can just barely get to our rock slide because we can shield this next weather ball as well. Now it's basically just a reckoning against whatever is in the bag. Same energy, same health. Can we win it in the zero shields? It's a frostless and frostless resists our fast move of um, the bug bite. It resists our bug bust. This is a game over because they can just go for two shadow balls and that's going to be it for the game. Um, yeah, look at this. We don't do any damage at all and this will not be enough to actually do enough damage against this frostless sadly so it's going to be it for the video thanks for watching we can still go for on bug bus here as we see the defense drop here and we can farm and down win the game and that's going to be it for the video thanks for watching see you next video have a great rest of your day bye